Let the doctrine of election be demolished, and the other will fall, of course, but that will cost too much pains, and they find a better account with weak minds in taking the other method, a method which the remonstrants formerly were desirous of at the Synod of Dort, could it have been allowed, a method which Dr Whitby has taken in his discourse of the five points. And this is the method which Mr Wesley has thought fit to take, and indeed he confines himself wholly to this subject, for though he calls the pamphlet predestination calmly considered, yet it only considers one part of it, reprobation, and that not any way of argument, but harangue, not taking notice of our arguments from scripture or reason, only making some cavilling exceptions to it, such as have the face of an objection shall gather up as well as I can from this wild and unmethodical performance and make answer to. And firstly, he desires it may be impartially considered how it is possible to reconcile reprobation with the following scriptures, Genesis 3.17 and 4.7, Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, 12, 26 to 28, 30, 15 to 2, Chronicles 15 to 1, Ezra 9, 13, 14, Job 36, verse 5, Psalm 145, verse 9, Proverbs 1, 23, Isaiah 65, verse 2, Ezekiel 18, verse 26, and Matthew 7, verse 26, 11, 20, 12, 41, 13, 11, 12, 22 to 8, and chapter 25, John 3, 18, and 5.44, Acts 8.20, Romans 1.20, and 2 Thessalonians 2.10, Predestination Calmly Considered, page 13. In all which there is not a word that militates against the doctrine of reprobation, nor is anything pointed at worthy of consideration. We know very well, nor is it contrary to this doctrine, that the curse came upon man for sin, that it is that which renders them unacceptable to God, and is the reason why, at last, they shall find none with him, nor him favourable to them. There is a repentance which may be found in the non-elect persons, instances of which kind do not at all weaken the doctrine. Matthew 13, 11 and 12 proves it. The word any is not in the original text of Job 36, 5. It is certain there are some whom God despises, Psalm 53, verse 5, and 73, verse 20. It is a pity, but he had transcribed two or three hundred more passages when his hand was in, when the whole book of Chronicles and the book of Esther, which would have been as much to his purpose as these, he has produced. Secondly, he proposes the following scriptures which declare God's willingness that all should be saved to be reconciled to the doctrine of reprobation. Matthew 21 verse 9, Mark 16 verse 15, John 1 verse 5, Acts 17 verse 24, Romans 9 verse 8, 10 verse 11, 1 Timothy 2 3 4, James 1 5, 2 Peter 2 3, 1 John 4 14, predestination calmly considered, page 16 and 17, some of which do not respect eternal salvation at all, but the temporal salvation of the Jews, and others have nothing to do with salvation in either sense, but speak only of God's will to save his elect, to whom he is long-suffering, and others his will, and others of his will, that Gentiles as well as Jews should be saved, and that it is his pleasure that some of all sorts should be saved by Christ, neither of which militate against the doctrine of reprobation. Thirdly, he thinks this doctrine is irreconcilable with the following scriptures, which declare that Christ came to save all men, that he died for all men, that he atoned for all, even for those that finally perish. Matthew 17, verse 17, Matthew 17, verse 11, John 1, 29, 3 to 17, 7 to 14, Romans 14 and 15, 1 Corinthians 7, 11 and 2, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, 1 Timothy 2, 6, Hebrews 2, 9, 2 Peter 2, 1, and 1 John 2, 1. Predestination calmly considered, page 16 and 17. But these scriptures say not that Christ came to save all that are lost, or that he came to save all men, or die for all men. For all the individuals of human nature 
There is not one text in Scripture in the whole Bible that says this. That which seems most likely is Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, that he might taste death for every man. But the word man is not in the original. It is only for everyone, for every one of the sons of God, of the children, of the brethren of Christ, of the seed of Abraham, a spiritual sense, as the context determines, as for the above cited passages, they regard either the world of God's elect or the Gentiles as distinguished from the Jews or all sorts of men, but not all the individuals of mankind and those who are represented as such that should perish or in danger of it or either such who only profess to be bought by Christ or real Christians whose peace and comfort were in danger of being destroyed, but not their persons and none of the passages militate against the doctrine under consideration. Fourthly, this doctrine is represented as contrary to and irreconcilable with the justice of God and with such scriptures that declare it, particularly Ezekiel 18, predestination calmly considered, page 19, to which may be replied that the chapter in Ezekiel concerns the people of the Jews only and not all mankind and regards only the providential dealings of God with them, with respect to civil and temporal things, and a vindication of them from inequality and injustice, and not spiritual and eternal things, or the salvation and damnation of men, and therefore is improperly produced. And if anyone does but seriously and impartially consider the doctrines above stated, they will see no reason to charge God with injustice, or find any difficulty in reconciling it to his justice. In the first branch of this justice, called preterition, let the objects be creatures fallen or unfall. It puts nothing into them. It leaves them as it finds them, and therefore does them no justice. In the other branch of it, appointment to condemnation, this is only for sin. Is there unrighteousness with God on that account? No, surely. If it is not injustice in him to condemn men for sin, it can be no injustice in him to decree to condemn them for sin. And if it would have been no unrighteousness in him to have condemned all men for sin and to have determined to have done it, as he doubtless might, it can be no ways contrary to his justice to condemn some men for sin and to determine so to do it. Wherefore, all this is said under this head is all harangue more noise and stands for nothing. Let the above argument be disproved if it can. Fifthly, this doctrine is represented as contrary to the general judgment and that upon this scheme there can be no judgment to come nor any future state of rewards and punishment. Predestination calmly considered, page 26 to 30. But why so? How does this appear? Why, according to our scheme, God of old ordained them to this condemnation. But then it was for sin. And if for sin, how does this preclude a future judgment? It rather makes one necessary, and certain it is, that a future judgment is agreeable to and quite inevitable by God. God decrees to condemn men for sin, men sin, and are brought into the judgment seat of God, and are justly condemned for it. The judgment of God takes place and the just reward of punishment pursuant to the righteous purpose of God and according to the rules of justice. But this writer has assurance to affirm that we say that God sold men to work wickedness, even from their mother's womb, and give them up to a reprobate mind, or ever they hung upon their mother's breast. This is entirely false. We say no such thing. We say with the scripture that all men sell themselves to work wickedness as they grow up, and that God gives men up to a reprobate mind after a long train of course of sinning, and it must be a righteous thing with God to bring such persons into judgment and condemn them for their wickedness. But then it is said they are condemned for not having the grace which God hath decreed they should never have. This is false again. We say no such thing nor does the doctrine we hold oblige us to it. We say indeed that the grace of God is his own, and whether it is the sense of the text in Matthew or no, it matters not. It is a certain truth, he may do what he will with his own grace. 
we own that he has determined to give it to some and not to others, as we find in fact he does. But then we say, he will condemn no man for want of his grace, he does not think it fit to give them, nor for their not believing that Christ died for them, but for their sins and transgression of his righteous law. And is not there enough to open the righteous judgment of God to proceed upon? Besides, the sovereign decrees of God respecting the final state of man are so far from rendering the future judgment unnecessary that will proceed according to them, along with other things, for with other books that will be opened then. The book of life will be one in the which some men's names are written and the others not, and the dead will be judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And whosoever is not found written in the book of life shall be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, verse 12, verse 15. I never knew you. Depart from me. Matthew 7, verse 23.